Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here with us today. My name is Andrew Silsby, and I'm president of Kennebec Savings Bank, but a longtime Kennebec Valley uh, Chamber of Commerce board member, and I'll be acting as your moderator for today's event. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to this month's Small Business Resource Team presentation in partnership with FAME. Quarterly, this group of professionals gathers here to hear insightful industry, learned knowledge, and topics that are forwarded by our members. I'd like to take a moment just to recognize that these presentations really wouldn't be possible without the support of GE Roofing, and we're very appreciative of their sponsorship. So before I introduce our speaker, I have just a few announcements that the chamber asked me to cover. Uh, so bear with me a little bit here. Our business after hours will be hosted by Vanderbrew in Winthrop on March 23rd from 5 to 7 p.m. The event is a great place to network with chamber members and local business representatives. They have plenty of space there for everybody to spread out. So come join us for a great uh, evening of networking. Our next women's luncheon will be uh, May, uh, excuse me, April 13th at 1130 a.m. at the Augusta Civic Center. Uh, Rachel Zachariah from Maine General Health will present on women's health titled, Take Time for Your Health. Okay, so today's presenter is Mary Pelletier. She is a NextGen 529 College Savings Counselor at the Finance Authority of Maine, FAME as we call them locally. Uh, she's a graduate of the University of Maine, my alma mater. Uh, and she graduated with a bachelor's in art education and a background in teaching from preschool to 12th grade. So we should have a great presentation here from a former teacher. At FAME, she continues to help students and families achieve their aspirations of higher education and fulfill their goals uh, for the future. FAME provides targeted financial tools, information programs to help grow Maine's economy and to help Maine residents become financially capable and afford higher education. FAME administers both Next Gen 529 and Maine Section 529 plans, which many families use to save for higher education. So please join me in welcoming Mary Pelletier. Thank you so much, Andrew. And thank you to Iris and the rest of the KB Chamber for um, having me today. I'm really excited to present for you all. So Iris, just before I get started, am I all set my pin? Awesome, thank you. Okay. So um, what I'm gonna do today with you guys is I'm going to share some really good resources from FAME to help you set up a financial wellness program for your employees. So we're going to talk a little bit about what financial wellness is and why you should be aware of it and why it might be something you wanna to offer to your employees. And I'm gonna show you the FAME Employer Financial Wellness Roadmap, which was created or debuted this January. And it is a roadmap that will help you set up your own financial wellness program and talks a lot about what FAME does for their employees and the best practices that FAME has learned for um, through research and data they've collected over the last couple of years to um, support employees through financial wellness. And after that, I'm going to talk to you guys about NextGen 529 and how myself can be a resource to you guys if you're planning on setting up a financial wellness program or if you already have one and you want to offer college savings benefits. And just so you know, I'm going to check the chat periodically. I'm not, if you have a question, just go ahead and add it into the chat. And every few slides or so, I'll just check up on that and make sure I answer any questions you have. Okay. So FAME, if you don't already know, is a quasi-independent state agency that works to provide financial solutions to help main people achieve their business and higher education goals. So as Andrew already said, I am a next-gen college savings counselor with FAME. I work under the education team. And the education team really focuses on planning, saving, and paying for higher education. So I'm gonna talk a lot more about what exactly I do at FAME in the second half of this, but um, you should definitely know that this the, the FAME really works to help businesses and individuals achieve their, um, their higher ed and business goals. So objectives today 
for this presentation is you're going to have an understanding of financial wellness by the end. And we're going to understand the benefits of offering an employee financial wellness program. You're going to walk away with some resources to start your own financial wellness program if you choose to, including the financial roadmap and in other resources that we have available. And then we're going to learn about NextGen 529 and how it can be used to save for higher ed. So what is financial wellness? You might have heard of this term before. You might have heard of the term financial literacy before. There's a lot of different terms that can be used, but um, the definition that we're going to be using comes from the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And they have done a lot of work to make this definition. They worked with consumers to see how they define financial wellness for themselves. And what we're using is financial, financial wellness is having control over day-to-day -day and month-to-month -month finances. So do you have the capacity to absorb a financial shock? Do you have a rainy day fund for if your car breaks down? Or do you have three to six months of emergency savings for if you or your spouse loses their job? Are you on track to meet your financial goals? And do you have financial freedom to make the choices that allow you to enjoy your life? So financial freedom and those financial goals are going to be very specific to the individual and understanding what those are is all about financial wellness and how to make incre incremental habit changes to be able to achieve those goals and that freedom. So employee financial stress. So I'm going to be talking a lot about what FAME does for a financial wellness program because the program that they've set up is based off of research that they conducted over the last few years and it really exemplifies the best practices that are available. So these employer, employer financial stressors came from a survey that was done on fin, uh, FAME employees and those concerns were insufficient emergency funds, inability to meet monthly expenses, credit card debt and reliance on credit cards, not being able to afford retirement, losing their job or reduction in household income, healthcare costs and paying for higher ed. So not only are there stressors that meet the immediate needs of the employee, so do they have enough money to um, put food on the table for themselves, but there's also financial stress stressors that hit the immediate family of your, the employees. So can they support an elderly parent or are they gonna be able to pay for their children's college? So if you're interested in setting up a financial wellness program, it's important to remember the needs of the employee, but as well as the needs that might be um, hitting the immediate family members of the employee. Okay, so as an employer, why should this be top of mind for us? Of course, we care about the employees that work for, for us, but we also have other benefits to offering benefits like a financial wellness program. And one of those is that programs like these have shown to increase productivity and reduce stress. So in the financial wellness roadmap that you guys are gonna receive at the end of this webinar, there's actually a calculator that will help you determine the loss in productivity due to financial stress um, on your employees. So I encourage you to take a look at that if that's something that interests you. It's a, an eye-opening experience to see how much stress really does affect an employee, their productivity and their ability to just be at work. So, um, you know, stress can really affect your health as we all know. So if you have a lot of financial um, stressors, then you might be taking more sick days. So in a program like this might improve that. Higher job satisfaction and engagement, of course, increased knowledge and participation in available benefit programs you might already have already, increased satisfaction with salary benefits, improved um, employee recruitment, and change in workplace culture that values financial wellness. So, of course, we know talking about money can be taboo. So changing the culture around that can really make um, employee be more feel more secure at their job, feel that they have um, support available to them, and they have the they feel empowered that they can take care of their finances with the salary that they already have with the tools that they're being provided at their job. 
All right, so now I'm gonna talk about what we offer at FAME for our employees for financial wellness programming. And just a quick overview would be, we offer confidential workplace financial coaching sessions three times a year. So I actually just had my first one yesterday with a, our financial coach, she was great. We met one-on-one -on -one and uh, we met via Zoom. And it was a space where I got to speak with her for an hour about my own personal finances, the, the finance goals that I have, the stressors that I have. And she gave some really great advice in just the short amount of time that I got to speak with her. So that's something that we get three times a year. We get an hour session in the, the beginning of the year. And then in three or four months after we have that initial conversation and we set up some personal goals, we have another meeting where we talk about how those goals are going and if there's any small habit changes that you can make to improve the goals even further. And then you meet again three or four months down the road and see the progress that you made. So again, those are all confidential and it's a really a no judgment zone. So you can approach the conversation with the financial coach, not being worried that you are going to be reprimanded or talked down to. It's a very easy conversation to have. And, um, you know, it, it's very, it was very beneficial, at least for me. And then next is the Money in the Morning workshop series. So this workshop series is just for FAME employees. And there are different experts that come in and talk to us about different topics in financial wellness. A lot of them are influenced by the survey that was done on employees. So the experts are talking specifically about the stressors that are affecting the, the employees at FAME. And sometimes we have FAME employees uh, host these webinars too, just based off the work that we're already doing. And then this is Enrich. So I want everyone to be aware that Enrich exists. It is a digital financial wellness curriculum that is available to every main resident. So FAME has paid for this. And if you're a main resident, you can access it for free. If you're interested in starting a financial wellness program, you can use the, the modules that are on Enrich to supplement a program like that. And um, I've, I've done one in Enrich as well. I've actually taken the money personality quiz that talks about your strengths and weaknesses as a consumer and a, a saver. And um, it's very insightful and helps you kind of start thinking about those topics in financial wellness. And finally, the incentive. So employees who participate in all of the requirements of the financial wellness program, which these are optional, but if you follow all of the criteria, then you earn a $250 incentive. So that would mean we do the three sessions with the financial coach, we do the money in, in the morning workshops, or if we can't meet, um, can't attend the workshops, then we would supplement whichever workshops we miss with enriched courses. So the, there's a lot of flexibility there, like uh, the money in the morning workshops happen at 9 a.m. once a month. If you can't meet that, or if you can't attend that, um, that session that month, then you could just do enriched courses to then make up for the fact that you couldn't go to the webinar. All right. Okay, so before I move on, I just wanna check the chat really quick. I don't have any questions so far. And uh, like I said, if you have any questions that come up, just feel free to put those right in there, but I'll keep moving along. So like I had mentioned before, FAME did a lot of data collection around the um, financial wellness program that they had in place because they wanted to find if it was working for the employees and what were the outcomes of, of the steps that they took to offer this type of programming. So some quantitative research outcomes that came from this were employees who participated in FAME's employee financial wellness program increased um, financial capability. So they had average financial well-being, um, excuse me, participants had higher average financial well-being as measured by the US Consumer Financial Protection Bureau's financial well-being scale. Participants overwhelmingly made financial goals. And that really comes from the goals being very personal to the individual, working with that financial coach, making those small incre incremental changes to their daily life to be able to meet the goals that they set for themselves. 
progress towards meeting financial goals did not come at high cost. Again, these were small habit changes that um, we worked with coaches to be able to, um, to achieve uh, the goals that we had set. And the benefits of FAME's Employee Financial Wellness Program exceeded the monetary and opportunity costs of the program. So the monetary cost of this program that FAME had set up was around $450 per participant and modest opportunity costs. But the benefits that came from it, which were reducing employee debt, building up employee savings, financial literacy gains, and financial well-being exceeded the cost to have the program. So here are some qualitative data outcomes. FAME had Financial Literacy Group, a research firm that looks for evidence-based solutions to financial challenges, come in and host focus groups. And um, the full report from the focus groups, as well as the quantitative data I just talked about, are in the roadmap. So you'll be able to see all of these outcomes. Again, don't feel like you have to um, take notes or, or um, try and quickly jot this down in your brain. But the outcomes from the focus groups that were, were hosted was that the topics in the workshops that were done in the enriched courses were engaging. Um, mostly because the topics in the month, money in the morning workshops were created based off the survey that was done um, on the employees. Support and account accountability, but not judgment. So the financial coach inspired candor in action. It was a very um, no judgment zone. You were able to make um, realistic goals for yourself and make those small changes to reach them. Assistance balanced with autonomy, so you had the freedom to make the goals that fit best fit your unique situation. Trust was maintained and partic participation compatible, so the scheduling piece, FAME employees who couldn't make the workshops could take enriched courses to um, fill that gap. Not just permission, but encouragement and institutionalizing program promotes retention and recruitment. So by keeping and building on current financial wellness programs, FAME will experience long-term benefits in employee retention. So this is where um, you're gonna get a lot of different resources for if you want to start your own financial wellness program. The first right here on the right is the roadmap. So the roadmap talks about the best practices for starting a financial wellness program and talks um, in more in depth about the program that FAME does and the research that came from hosting a program like this and um, doing surveys and focus groups and really finding data to help support the, the choices that were made for the program. And then at the end of the well, wellness roadmap is um, additional resources that will be very helpful for you if you plan on starting your own financial wellness program. So I highly encourage anyone interested to read through that. But I also encourage you to visit the FAME website. So FAME's website, FAME, F-A-M-E, Main, M-A-I-N-E, dot com, will have additional resources. There's a whole employers tab that has um, things in addition to the roadmap that will help you if you're planning on starting a program like this. And finally, you guys should definitely know about the financial check-ins with FAME. So financial check-ins with FAME is very similar to monies in the, money in the mornings, but it is for the public. So there are different areas in financial wellness that FAME will host a webinar about, and you could use these to supplement your own financial wellness program. It's important to note that these are, are um, webinars that you could join like the one we're doing right now, or you can go back into the archive and watch the video after it's already been recorded. The two that are coming up right now, if you're interested, is April 1st, the free digital wealth financial wellness resources for students and families, and then May 6th, managing student loan repayment. Okay. And finally, there is this resource sheet that you're going to get at the end of the webinar as well. It has a link directly to Enrich, which 
Again, I encourage everyone to go check out Enrich. It is free for every main resident on behalf of FAME. And it is um, very high quality and the modules are, are very um, user friendly. There's also going to be Manage, which is FAME's free publication on successful money management, uh, other calculators and tools and informational videos. Okay. So talking about these resources, I should also mention that I am also a resource to employers who wish to start a financial wellness program. As a college savings counselor, I work directly with HR offices to help set up financial well, um, excuse me, college savings benefits for employees. And um, we're gonna talk more about that right now. I just wanna check the chat really quick to make sure. No questions as of yet, that's great. So let's talk a little bit about NextGen. So as a college savings counselor, I talk about NextGen 529 a lot with employers and with the public. If you don't already know, NextGen 529 is Maine's Section 529 plan. And it is a plan that, an investment plan that families can use to save for higher education. NextGen is for students of all ages, including adults who are saving for their own education. Some tax treatment of 529s. Contributions are made with after-tax dollars. Earnings in a 529 plan are tax-free when used for qualified higher ed expenses, which I'm going to go over exactly what that means in a moment. And NextGen has a variety of investment options with varying levels of risk. So if we Go back to the freedom for the employee to be able to make their own decisions based on their money. NextGen does offer plenty of options for the employee to choose the best plan for them. To uh, the two plans that they have to choose from, and then there's other options below each plan would be the direct series for investors who want to make their own investment choices, and then the select series who for investors who choose to work with a financial advisor. So flexibility and use of assets. Assets can be used at an eligible accredited post-secondary school, and that can include an in-state or out-of-state school, a public or private university, a two-year, a four-year, four and graduate schools. In addition to the two-year, four-year, and graduate schools, you can also use next-gen funds for tuition and fees, books and supplies, computer equipment, software and services, required equipment, and room and board. Up to $10,000 per year from a next gen 529 account for the same beneficiary for elementary and um, secondary public, private, and religious school tuition can. Um, you can use the, those funds for that purpose, so up to $10,000. Uh, you can also use them for expenses such as fees, books, supplies, and equipment required for the participation of a beneficiary in an apprenticeship program registered and certified with the Secretary of Labor. So, you know, I make a point to say that NextGen is for saving for higher ed because higher ed can look like different things depending on um, an individual's personal goals. So if you're, if you have a goal to go to trade school, then you can use your funds to go to a um, qualifying apprenticeship program for trade. And finally, amounts paid as principal or interest can be, or any qualified education loans of either the beneficiary or sibling of the beneficiary up to $10,000 per individual. So if you already have existing student loans, then you could use funds from an extra account to pay those, uh, pay those off up to $10,000. So now I'm gonna take a moment and speak on the grants that are available through NextGen for Maine residents. And this is where, if you are looking to start or grow a financial wellness program, you would probably really want someone like myself to come in and talk about the grants that are available to Maine residents through NextGen, just so that the awareness is there and they, they might not get that information anyway else. And um, I'll talk about those right now. So the first one is the $100 initial matching grant, which is eligible for main accounts, one grant per beneficiary, and it is $100 
for a newly opened NextGen account with the minimum contribution of $25. And then next is the $500 Alphon Grant. If you are not aware of the Alphon Grant, the Alphon Grant is $500 awarded to every main um, resident baby born after 2013. And FAME administers this grant. And the moment that baby is born, the $500 is being invested. So the, the grant, varies in value over the years. And then by the time that child becomes of age to go to college, they have the grant available to them and um, the earnings that it could have earned over time. So it, the important thing to know about the Alphon grant is that if you do not have the $25 to open an account, you can open a NextGen account by linking your Alphon grant to said account. But if you want the $100 matching grant, you have to put in the $25 minimum contribution. And then the Next Step Matching Grant. So the Next Step Matching Grant is a 30% match on contributions made in a calendar year. So if you contribute $75 to a NextGen account over the course of one year, you will get a $25 matching grant. And the cap for that is $300. So if you contribute up to $1,000, you will get $300 back. You can always contribute more to a next-gen account, but the max that you could get for the grant is 300. And finally, the automated funding grant. So this grant is for if you set up for automated funding, either from your regular bank account or through payroll deduction. So if you are interested in offering payroll deduction to a next-gen account, it may be advantageous to have someone like me come in and talk about you uh, talk to your employees about this grant in particular, where it would be available to them um, through the payroll deduction at their, with their employer. Okay, so matching grants and any other earnings, it's important to note that um, they can only be used to pay for qualified higher education expenses at a post-secondary institution. So, um, if you have a, a bill from your college or university, you can only use the grants in their earnings to pay off the bill directly to the university. And uh, we make sure to explain to account owners that if they are going to be using the funds from the account to use the grant money first, and then if you have books or fees or you have to pay for room and board off campus to use the, your own contributions from your account to do so. And finally, I'll just give you um, a quick example. So contributing $1,000 per year into a NextGen account will make, uh, for a Maine resident will make you eligible for a Next Step, Next Step grant of $300 per year. Uh, that total would be $1,300. If you did that for 20 years, not even taking into account the way the market goes or the, um, the different grants that you might be eligible on top of that, that's $26,000 um, with just the, that element added to it. So saving versus borrowing. I talk to the public about the difference between adding money to a regular savings account with a set um, interest rate that might be very low and then adding funds to a NextGen 529 account that is being invested and has the opportun opportunity to earn through the stock market. Uh, this is, again, something that isn't necessarily taught in school all the time. So if you get this information through your employer, it might be the only place you get this information. And um, it's just a, it reiterates the point that offering these kind of benefits can be really beneficial to an employee. But just very quickly, I want to point out here that $1,000 for 20 years that I had mentioned before, this is just in a regular savings account with a, a typical interest rate from a savings account. And it shows here that the end result of saving $1,000 into a savings account for 20 years is um, a little bit over $20,000. And then it shows the difference between that in a typical 529 account with the average um, rate of 
return from the stock market, which adds um, almost double to the value with $13,000. And then finally, the, um, the 529 account, next gen 529 account with the grants that are available to them. So this, in this circumstance, the account owner contributed the $1,000 every year and they maxed out their opportunities for grants with the $6,000 here. And so it shows the earnings from the, their own contributions, the matching grant opportunities, as well as the earnings that, have, that they got from the um, grants being invested. Okay, so account contributions can be done online. They can also be done automatically through your bank account or through payroll deduction. They can be th through a contribution coupon or uh, mailing a check. And you can also roll over funds from in a different 529 account to a next gen account. We also encourage others to give gifts to next gen accounts. So grandparents, aunts and uncles, um, just friends or neighbors can contribute to a next gen account for a beneficiary. And we also talk about not leaving money on the table. So uh, what are you doing with your annual tax return? Is there any funds that could be set aside for saving for higher ed? Um, in addition to this, uh, when I work with HR offices, there are times where I work with them to set up a gift to employees. BAME is actually an employer that does this. If a, an employee has a new baby, they provide a gift to the employee to contribute to NextGen account for that new child. So if that's something that interests you, that's, that is a, um, something I help employers with. Okay, finally, making withdrawals. So um, you can do this verbally. You can call and request a withdrawal on the phone. You can do this online or you can submit a withdrawal request form and mail it into the bank that your account is tied to. And here is the website. So nextgenforme.com also has an employer tab that will have very helpful resources to you if you're interested in doing things like offering payroll deduction or maybe setting up a gift for um, employees with new babies. Uh, I encourage everyone to look at the FAME website, so famemame.com, but also check out nextgenforme.com. So those, that's all of the information I have for you today. Um, key takeaways that I would want you to walk away with is definitely check out the FAME Employer Financial Wellness Roadmap and check out Enrich. And then finally, check out the nextgenforme.com website if you're interested in offering college savings benefits to employees. So I'm gonna open up the floor to any questions and you can go ahead and unmute yourself and ask them or you can put them in the chat if you have them. Mary, thank you very much. That's a great presentation. Uh, the first question that I thought of is what happens if you do need to spend the money on something other than education? It, you kind of say you can't. Um, I'm assuming you can, but you have to pay taxes on the on the income. Yes, thank you for clarifying that, Andrew. Yeah, if you need to use the funds for from your next gen account for a purpose that's not a qualified higher ed expense, then you just would get taxed at um, the the rate for other types of investment accounts of this nature, like a Roth IRA. Uh, I can't tell you the exact uh, rate at, off the top of my head, though. Yeah, that's great. And you also mentioned the Alphon uh, $500, but you have to open an account first. They earmark the money for every new child, uh, but some of that money goes unused. Is that right? Well, I think you might be thinking of... Um, that was an option a few years ago. So there was an opt-in period for a few years, but at this point, every main resident baby born after 2013 is awarded this money. You don't have to open a next-gen account to get access to it, but we highly encourage people to open a next-gen account and tie your Alphon grant to it because you get the information for both in uh, the same way. And it makes it a little bit easier to understand um, 
the savings that you have available to you for higher ed. And also it, it just, it gives you a, a, a starting point to start saving for yourself, even though they're not, um, you can't contribute to the Alphon grant, it gives you a, a starting point. You know how much the Alphon grant is worth and you can start saving on your own from that point. Andrew, this is Elizabeth. Did you mean that if they don't use it by the time they're 28 or sometime in the future? Is that what you were asking? Like every child has it, but not every child will use it or go on to higher ed. Correct. Well, I guess my question was, is the account automatically opened or, or ah. does a parent have to do something? Do you mind so it, Mary? Mary, if I say, go ahead, that one. Yeah, go ahead. So I was uh, originally the Alphon program manager 14 years ago at FAME. And the way we say it now that it went universal, every chat, we take the BVR list, the Bureau of Vital Statistics records and set aside those funds for each child. Um, but it is a grant. The child never owns the grant. The family never owns the grant. You have to open an account because you can't add to the grant. And I think that's what a lot of people don't understand is it's reserved, it's there. If the child goes on to higher ed when they're 18, we will send the grant and any earnings to the school they choose that's qualified. But otherwise it sits there for that child. It gets recycled when they're 28 because that's when it expires if they don't use it. Um, but if they never open an account, the grant itself is still available, but they're not necessarily saving in next gen and like Mary says attaching that grant to the communications and seeing the values at the same time yeah that's great because uh, that's exactly my question and I, I was confused so I'm happy I asked the question yeah. to clarify that because I was sort of assuming that the Alphon was making a deposit after the parent opened the 529 no nope, they make just it keeping that yeah. they're keeping that in their funds uh, yep, but the anyway. Alphons I mean this is for the banker and you the Alphonse yeah. have their own account and it has yeah. millions of dollars, yeah. but yeah. they allocate, they have a list of names, basically, you know, yeah. January, 2022 babies were born yep. and we just invested the money. Great. Yeah. Are there other questions? I just wanted to clarify for Mary. It's, I always say eligible main accounts. There's, um, a main account is an account owned by a main resident or where the beneficiary is a main resident that's named to the account. So even some of your employers may not have children, but they might be a grandparent or an aunt or an uncle to a child. And so they would be eligible for a lot of the grants as well. So it really is kind of a universal benefit to employees. There's probably every employee knows a kid and could, um, help the kid. And if you don't have one, you can use my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> and Mary, uh, transferability to other kids. So let's assume we've got one kiddo uh, that, that you thought was going to go to college that goes into the service, let's say hypothetically, uh, but you got another kiddo that's coming along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can transfer funds and earnings from a next gen account uh, to a different beneficiary, but it isn't really important to note that the second that you do that, the grants that that one beneficiary was eligible for are null and void. Yeah. I, th I think there was another question somewhere. Um, maybe I thought I saw a hand raised, but no. How would you apply for the grant when you've got a student, a child ready to go off to college, how would you apply for the grant or to draw that $500 from the out fund? So if you have a, like if your child or the student that's going to college applies for the school, the out fund grant will automatically show up on their financial aid. Oh, nice. Good. And correct sure. me if I'm wrong, Elizabeth, because she, like I said, she's the expert. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure because we haven't built that yet. The, the oldest Alphon grantee was born in 2008. So they're not quite going to college yet unless they're, uh, you know, they're 16 now. Um, well, they and wouldn't the qualify. Universal That's children good. are nine. So, oh. um, so eventually we'll have a process to make sure that the grants go first. But I will say when you 
Today, a lot of children are going off to school and they have the other grants, not the Alphon grant, but all the other matching grants. And we always try to advise and help the person understand they should withdraw their grant money first, because if you wait and save it to last, um, the grants are there and they don't have enough funds contributed to withstand the grants. So the grants could be null and void, like she says. So that's kind of a hard thing to know about. Even my niece who worked for fame, she didn't work for fame when she was in college, but um, her mom was taking distributions and she she forgot to ask for the grants first from the, uh, let you know, we have a banking partner. So I, we do have to do a little more communication around that when students are of, of uh, attendance age to, Take the grants out first because it's a, like a term and terms and conditions item right mm -hmm. and merrill lynch is our um, person for our direct series so they're usually pretty good about it but it's always it's always a little bit a little bit of a jigger at the end there <laughs> okay any other questions Mary Pelletier and Elizabeth, we got a bonus uh, having you uh, join us too today. So that's great. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Jeannie Roofing as our sponsor and hope you'll all attend some future chamber events. Mm. I, and I can do nothing but give you back uh, 15 minutes of your day. <laughs> thank you thank all you for all. your time. Thank yeah, you. Good job. Great job, thank Mary. You. Thank you.